I guess my first question, uh, Dylan, would be how did you approach the role of Principal Wilkins? Um, you know, what experiences or references did you draw from in, in creating and, and sort of shaping that character? Well, you know, it's interesting. Um, uh, from the beginning, Michael Doherty uh, made it very clear that uh, my principal, Wilkins, was a, was a real traditionalist. Mm-hmm. That he was a guy that, uh, just like Sam, believes in following the rules of Halloween right. and punishing those who don't. Right. So I think uh, I, I love that part of it. I loved approaching it from a very positive viewpoint rather than a guy who's in a his hometown just looking to kill people or right. go and grab people. But instead, that he's a guy who wants to root out the people that don't treat Halloween in a good way. Right. And, uh, and I love that. And, you know, Sam, I think uh, he comes to the door, and once I give him a little candy, he says, okay, you can go on doing what you're doing. You're all right. Right. And uh, so I think he, uh, he signs off on my behavior. I think Sam would agree that uh, the principal is actually doing good for the town and for his family. Yeah, I mean, I guess there's a sense throughout the film, uh, and it's evocative of a lot of, you know, classic uh, horror, um, you know, from, from olden times or even from, you know, Tales of the Crypt and all like EC comics, of a sort of a skewed sense of justice. Oh, I certainly, I, I, I <laughs> certainly agree with you. I think, uh, I think that Trick or Treat uh, sort of sets uh, a standard uh, for a modern film that reaches mm-hmm. back towards telling a story mm-hmm. and letting people laugh and, and get to like characters and then be scared out of their minds. Uh, it, 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 there's those old uh, uh, kind of anthology movies like uh, Tales from the Crypt or the, right. uh, the, even those old television series. Right. Uh, uh, what was it called? Night, Night Gallery? Night Gallery, yeah. I love those shows. Right. Love those shows. Right. Uh, and there was just you know something about them that they would uh, each story you'd kind of see uh, for itself what it was. But what Mike's done, which is so great, is they start weaving in and out of each other, which is really yeah. wonderful. Yeah, I noticed the absence of. Uh, a lot of things that date movies, like, um, you know, for, for instance, like a smartphone today in 10 years will seem archaic. I think that's true. I yeah. I think that's true. And I think Michael uh, really uh, uh, started out with that vision because uh, he had these drawings for us to look to, uh, to sort of get a sense of what he was going for. And they always had that, this feeling of like, when is this exactly? And you... You really couldn't tell. It was it was a just at some point in the past, or maybe it's tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's uh, he's he's really good that way, and he created a world like that. Uh, there was that poor neighborhood in Toronto where they they never did stop with Halloween. Uh, uh, the the folks had their yards all dressed up like Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> did they get some ordinance or you know for citation from the city or something? I don't. <laughs> Some places you can't you take. take those jack-o'-lanterns down. Most people are lazy that way with Christmas lights and stuff, but for Halloween, it's actually kind of cool. Um, sure. So, and you've touched on it, but could you elaborate on some of the attachment you have um, to Trick or Treat? Well, I think uh, for me, it, 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 it starts and ends with Michael Doherty. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I could tell when it started uh, generating some heat and we go to Comic-Con mm-hmm. and there'd be all these people just going nuts right. about it. And I just turned to him and say, how did they see it? And he said, they, you know, they'll do anything right. to see this film. And I, and there's, there's many, many more people that want to see this film. They right. may not know it's there yet, but they right. want to see it. Right. I mean, you've just uh, touched on something, uh, that was going to be my next question. Sorry to interject there. But, like, you mentioned Comic-Con, and, and I, w- I was going to, you know, follow up with, you know, fans and fan sites like Geeks of Doom, you know, have sprung up and, and are bringing attention to lost gems like Trick or Treat. I mean, and so it, it's all part of this rise of net culture, and especially geek net culture, that uh, I think it must be uh, very encouraging, you know, for, uh, you know, professional actor and, and, you know, filmmakers who, you know, for certain projects that do need to have the fan base champion. You know, I think it's, it's 
happened a lot I, 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 through through the ages of mm-hmm. some executive deciding that people wouldn't like something. Right. And the people stepping up and saying, what are you talking about? Right. I want to see this. This is exactly what I want to see. Right. Uh, it, you know, you keep saying uh, the word geeks, and uh, my wife was a part of the original cast of Freaks and Geeks. Yeah. She played the mom in that, and, and uh, NBC had no idea what they had. I know. And uh, just canceled it yeah. before it had its full run. Yeah. Now people are loved. watching the reruns again and again on different channels uh-huh. on the, the cable, uh-huh. and also have the the whole DVD of all of the shows, and they uh, it, it's got a life of its own because yeah. of the incredible cast and Paul Feig and mm-hmm. Bud Apatow, mm-hmm. and uh, you, you just can't stop it. And uh, and uh, for me, it's championing people like Andrew Curry who did uh, Fido, and and Michael Doherty who did. Uh, um, who did uh, uh, Trick or Treat, because they're the ones that come up with a vision of it, and they should be supported, and they, they should be allowed to help their studios find their audiences, because they are there. Obviously, he was right all these yeah. years ago. I, you know, that audience is there. And now I'm excited that Legendary is uh, going forward and uh, trying to give people a, a little taste of what they hunger for. Can you speak to a little bit about why the movie... I mean, it was, it had a, you know, a fair budget. It was, it has great production value. Why was it pulled? Uh, you know, it's hard to say. I think, I think people have these hard and fast rules that they live by. And they, and the, the fear was because it was an episodic uh, thing, mm. that it wasn't one plot from beginning to end. Mm-hmm. The girl leaves her house then has to get back to her house, and mm-hmm. what's in her house? Is she going upstairs, and then she goes running out of the house? Mm-hmm. If, if it's not just one thing, I think uh, uh, the, the the thought was is that is that people just wouldn't uh, uh, that, react to it as well. And, and that just so to... underestimates the audience's intelligence, doesn't it? I think it does. You know? I think it's... it does. There's, it just, like, you gotta, you got to let people have a chance at yeah. that at seeing something like this and then find out whether you're right or not. But I know it's a big uh, money thing to, mm-hmm. to step forward and say this, but I I really always thought that Halloween would have become a, a natural home mm-hmm. for, this, uh, for this film and that it, uh, the whole month of October and November probably that it could have just run and run and run. You're about to be in Anchorman 2. I just saw the second trailer. You're in it prominently, and it seems, you know, you're playing some slick kind of guy. It looks really big. I mean, how do you feel about becoming one of the potential legendary Anchorman characters? <laughs> <laughs> T-shirts and stuff, you know? It was it was such a joy working with those four guys uh, and Adam McKay, who mm-hmm. is funnier than any of them. Adam is, Adam is hilarious, and he... He, he, you, you talk about actors taking a role and just going with it. They all immediately fell right into their their roles from Anchorman One, and they there's certain there's a certain wonderful thing about Anchorman Two that they haven't changed at all. Right. There's, there's <laughs> nothing that growth and time have done for them. Right. It's all exactly the same. Right. I 